Hello and welcome to Real Opinions and today I'm going to be reviewing the BFG and I want to start with a little bit of background because this is the first time that I've actually reviewed a Spielberg film for us and it's important to me because Spielberg was the person who made me fall in love with films when I was a kid. In fact my earliest memory is of watching Jurassic Park on VHS, at least I assume it was on VHS, it is a very early memory, it could have been on TV, but since then every image from that film has been permanently like burnt into my mind and it's fueled my subsequent passion for cinema, for blockbusters and dinosaurs as well. I love dinosaurs. I still really like all three of those things. And since then, you know, I saw every Spielberg film that I could and they've all given me something to latch onto and something to like. Even, you know, the lesser ones like AI or War of the Worlds, they've got great stuff in there. Moments of genuine brilliance. I mean, personally, I really like The Lost World. I think it's got some really cool stuff in it, but you know, that's what I'm saying is even his lesser films have some greatness in them. So the great ones like Close Encounters or E.T. or Jaws, I mean, they are like a, the, among the best films ever made, in my opinion, on like an objective level. So my point is, like every fanboy, every film fanboy, I love Spielberg. He's recently become a bit hit and miss, especially since the dawn of the 21st century, I guess. But he still, even then, directed a few really great ones. I love Catch Me If You Can. And I would insist that even the weakest Spielberg films have something worth championing and shouting about. Yes, even the one with Shia LaBeouf and the monkeys. So when I say that the BFG probably sits towards the lower end of his filmography, I mean that as a very, very faint criticism. People talk all the time about, like, you know, damning something with faint praise. Well, this is the exact opposite. This is, like, praising something with faint criticism. Because being at the lower end of the Spielberg scale is still pretty good. So, while his latest effort may lack that kind of implacable, uh, very kind of like abstract sense of magic that E.T. has, or the wonder that Jurassic Park instilled on my impressionable mind as a kid, it is still a charming, entertaining, and really likeable film. For those who don't know, it tells the story of Sophie, who's played by Ruby Barnhill, I think that's her name. And Sophie is a young orphan who is captured uh, by the BFG and taken to giant country. There, she bonds with him. Uh, he's played by Mark Rylance, uh, you know, Oscar winner now, Mark Rylance. Uh, and he's learning, and and they he starts to teach her about his way of life, the food he eats, his career as a dream catcher, that kind of stuff. But it also transpires that the BFG is not only comparatively approachable for being a giant and comparatively friendly, but he's also not that big. And there are far bigger and far nastier giants out there. These giants, uh, they don't share his vegetarian lifestyle and are always on the lookout to eat any humans that they come across. And they regard the BFG himself with contempt, kind of call, they call him a runt and they think he's a disgrace to giant kind because he's so nice and kind of in their eyes weak, I guess. And so they accordingly, they treat him with cruelty and basically bully him. Which is when Sophie kind of decides, right, we have to do something about this, and they kind of crack a plan uh, to basically get rid of these giants, as well as at the same time show the world that they're not all cannibal cannibalistic, cannibalistic, cannibalistic monsters, and that there are good giants like the BFG out there. It's a simple story, but it's also one that takes a long time to get going. I really never thought that a Spielbergian adventure story would contain so much sitting around doing nothing. For the entire first act, we just watched the BFG and Sophie go through seemingly endless series of dull conversations. I mean, I know that the whole crux of the story is supposed to be their relationship, but I don't think it needed to be developed in such a mundane way. If you think about E.T., E.T. is the obvious comparison point here. E.T. is the film that this shares the most DNA for, with. So I think it's a fair, you know, fair point to actually compare the two. And the thing is, in E.T., the relationship between Elliot and E.T. is established and developed far more economically, a more entertaining way. You know, like, we learn things about them through visual storytelling, through comedic sequences like the ones where the alien gets drunk. And, you know, stuff actually happens between them. Here we just listen to plodding exposition over and over again with little sense of adventure or even progression. It's just they sit and they talk, and then they sit and they talk, and I honestly think the relationship would have been much more engaging and believable if it developed over the course of the adventure rather than developed before the adventure. It's like they thought, we need to develop these characters and get you to care about them, and once we've done that, you'll care about the adventure. But you could have developed them 
along with the adventure rather than before it. I really can't stress how weird it is. It's just so long of them just sat down talking and then they walk somewhere and they talk again. And then it hits this point where they go out dream catching and they basically, the, the way they do the dream catching is the dreams are like these colourful wisps of light that they chase around. And that sequence where they just run around chasing dreams made me care about them far more than any of the conversation and dialogue that came before. It really is weird that it took so long for them to get there because that's something that I think Spielberg does well is that he kind of has this sense of wonder and awe and that he brings that and he makes you feel that but for this you spend so long just waiting for that to happen luckily when it does and when the plot properly sets in motion that signature creativity and sense of wonder is on display two set pieces in particular stood out to me one of them involving the giants searching for sophie in the bfg's home and that was like, it was inventive, it was energetic, it felt a bit like a cartoon. They kept like, you know, using the scenery in inventive ways and it was choreographed quite creatively. I thought that bit was really good. It was fun. It was what I wanted from the rest of it. And then the other set piece is the one I was speaking about where they chase the light and they chase the dreams, which I thought was awe inspiring and genuinely beautiful in that kind of way that Close Encounters is. Like, those bits, those bits are really good. When the film is good, it is good. There's even a bit with a good fart joke, to be honest. And, and yeah, fart jokes can be good. I guess we all sort of go like, when you hear that there's a fart joke in something, you kind of like, oh, is that, it's fart joke humor, really? But this shows that fart jokes can be done well if you have someone good, you know, at the helm, like you do with Spielberg. The real MVP of the film is Mark Rylance. I don't really think anyone could disagree with that. His performance basically hits every necessary beat. It's funny when it's supposed to be, it's heartwarming when it's supposed to be, and it's always endearing. One of the things that really impressed me was actually the physicality of the giant. You know, it's a performance capture uh, performance. <sighs> performance capture performance. Brilliant. That was good, good wording, Harrison. It's a performance capture performance. And it really demonstrates what the what this process can bring to a character because the way he moves, the mannerisms, and all of those little things that you expect from a normal performance come through into the CGI character, and it just makes him feel a lot more lifelike and well distinct. And I think the way he moves, the way that he kind of like when he's doing his dream catching, or the way that he hides in the city, is very kind of flowing and well choreographed and I think that is because of the motion capture and I think that's really great and I think that Rylance's performance is really great I think the technological side of it is brilliant as a technological achievement and as a achievement in performance as well the BFG himself is great he's a triumph it's also one of the least uncanny CGI like humanoid characters I've ever seen which you know is, is worth praising too Unfortunately, I can't quite say the same thing about Sophie. I mean, criticizing a child's performance can always feel a little shitty. They're just kids, after all, and Ruby Barnhill is like 11 or 12. But I'm sorry, I found her character really annoying. Which is odd because, again, Spielberg... When I think of Spielberg, I think of him delivering authentic child characters. It's one of his specialties. I know I'm bringing up E.T. again, but that film managed to create child characters that felt truly real and believable. You know, the way they just sit and interact with each other. It never felt like I was watching an adult's version of what kids are like, or like a scripted version of kids. It felt like I was just watching kids just act and be in a really kind of nuanced and sophisticated way. Sophie, on the other hand, feels like child character like an archetype like she's loud and she doesn't really behave like any child would normally she lacks any of those detailed behavioral like quirks that you know really make these child characters feel real you know you think of like say jaws and there's the bit where the kid's like mimicking his dad's face movements like that is that feels like something a kid would do and it makes them feel like an authentic, believable performance, but here it just felt like a character 
she doesn't really have that much to work with, so I don't really blame the actress that much. She's just a bit of an irritating character. She's meant to be kind of like endearingly confident and everything, but she just came across as a bit obnoxious and a little too perfect to me. You know, Elliot in E.T., he was flawed, he had weaknesses, he got scared, he got upset, and that was what made him feel real, and that was what made you feel connected to him. Sophie is just kind of perfect, and I don't mean to do the whole Mary Sue thing, because it annoys me, but she never messes anything up, and she never shows any vulnerability, but more importantly, it never felt like she was scared. Like, when the giants are coming to attack her, she just sort of feels like a kid acting, not like a child genuinely reacting to these things. And I just thought, like, where's the Spielberg who brought the kids from E.T.? Where's the Spielberg who managed to do great family dynamics with close encounters? Where's, where's the Spielberg who managed to bring these child characters to life in a really believable way? My other big criticism is one that I never expected to be making in, like, a million years. Like, I'm genuinely shocked that I'm going to be saying this. But I didn't like John Williams' score at all. John Williams is one of my heroes. He's been instrumental to some of my favourite movie moments. Some of the ones that shaped my childhood and my later life. He is a genius, and he is unrivaled in the realm of film scoring. He truly is. And I can't expect him to deliver, like, Jaws-level brilliance every time. But I kind of expected more than this. It just feels like he filled the soundtrack with cues that weren't good enough for Harry Potter. Like the leftovers from Harry Potter or from Tintin. I've listened to it a few times now, and okay, there's maybe a couple of motifs that I pick up, but most of it's just kind of unmemorable. But even more surprising than that, because, you know, making an unmemorable score isn't that bad. You know, John Williams has done hundreds. Some of them aren't going to be that memorable. But some of it's actually kind of annoying. It just feels like repetitive, generic, whimsical music, and it never really goes away. It's just there all the time, you're just hearing um, and it's just a bit irritating, I thought. A lot of people have really liked the, the score though, which is great, because I'm always happy when composers get name checked and referenced, because I don't think that they get that enough. But in my opinion, this time I didn't really feel it. Overall, I'd say the BFG has its moments, particularly in the latter half, and it definitely has some visual flourishes. The bits with the light genuinely can be quite beautiful. Um, you know, say what you want about Spielberg, but he can make some impressive images when he puts his mind to it, and this film does evidence that talent at times. I also really liked how they visualised the dreams during these weird alchemy sequences. If you see the film, you'll know what I mean. Like, when they're making dreams, they visualise it in quite an inventive way that I liked. Nonetheless, I couldn't help but feel like some of the magic was missing. I want to reiterate, I'm not saying everything needs to be E.T. to be brilliant. I know I've compared this loads to E.T. Not everything needs to be E.T., but I do feel like way too much of this film was just meh, and I couldn't get attached to the lead character and Sophie at all. So those feel like fairly big criticisms. Still, I would recommend it. It's got some good moments, and the BFG himself is a great creation, and it's brought to the screen brilliantly, and you know, like I said, Spielberg at his weakest is still Spielberg. Overall, I'd give the BFG either a low 7 or a high 6. I think I'll be generous enough and go with a low 7. But yeah, I don't know. It just feels like... It almost feels rushed, I don't know. Like, like he paid attention on certain sequences and other things he just kind of did to get out of the way. Still, good, you know? a good film nonetheless thank you for watching um and i'll probably have another review to you soon bye bye